Start charging you for office space and utilities, all right? Bones in the lot. What are you talking about? I pay you plenty. Yeah, what about all the well-heeled customers I drag in this jerk? Does that include me? No. Forget it. Nico's acting like a tool. Come on, sit down. I'm walking to my office here. I want to ask you something. Uh, what's ever cooking up in that devious mind of yours? I want no part of it. I got a favor to ask you. Personal favor. Ah, uh, see you later. No, 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 come on, come on, come on, come on, sit down, sit down, sit down. Seriously, it's not for me, it's for Dixie. <laughs> I should have guessed. She's been having a hard time since the baby was born. Well, haven't we all? I mean, she's depressed and she's uncertain, and, and, and she needs a friend at court. So? So, what I was thinking is maybe, you know, you could, uh... Well, I, I know it's a lot to ask, but, uh... Could you make up with your father and, like, move back into the homestead? That way you could keep an eye on each other. See, last night I was sure as anything that Adam Jr. had been taken. I really carried on something awful. But then when Adam and I went upstairs, look at his crib, he was there. He was fine, safe and sound. And then this morning, um... I'm right here with you, darling. Tell Dr. Fowler what happened this morning. Um, Adam found Adam Jr. in his tub by himself. I guess, I guess I put him in there, but the thing is, is I don't remember I putting him in his tub or filling up the bath or anything. You gotta help me. You gotta tell me what's the matter because I don't want to hurt my son. I would rather die first. Well, you're overstressed from the kidnapping and uh, you don't have to pussyfoot around with us, doctor. Yeah, just tell me. Just tell me straight out. Well, the, the episodes that you're describing could indicate many things. If it's serious, say so. Mrs. Chandler, uh, your symptoms could be potentially dangerous. Are you saying that maybe sometime down the line I might hurt my own little boy? Or even herself? Uh, yes, I'm afraid that is what I'm saying. <gasps> God! hell of an answer. Well, the problem is that your wife has been suffering with this condition longer than most women do. Please tell me how I can get myself out of this as fast as possible. Well, that might be a slower process than you'd like. I, I recommend that you start by finding a good therapist. I could refer you to several people. No, thank you. I don't think a therapist is good. It just takes too long. Um, isn't there something maybe I could take, maybe, or do right now? There's several excellent antidepressant drugs, but the problem is that uh, we found that medication is of limited value without the therapy. I don't hold much stock with psychiatry here. Well, you asked for my recommended treatment. That's the best available. Well, what about my minister? I mean, I could talk to my minister. I mean, he's always been a comfort to me. Pastoral counseling would be a start. And, and I, I could get a nanny. I mean, Adam always thought a nanny would be a good idea. Darling, you said you didn't want any help. Well, you know, I mean, a nanny could, you know, look out for me and the baby at the same time until I got better. Yeah, that's an excellent idea. I am not going to let this thing get me. I mean, I have my family. I, I'm going to fight until it's gone. Sweetheart, that's the spirit, and I will help you in every way I can. Oh, you're sweet. I am so lucky to have such a wonderful husband. I hope you'll feel free to call me if you have any more questions, Mrs. Chandler. Thank you. And thank you for coming all the way down here. I mean, I know with doctors, all your time, it's very valuable. Thank you. Yeah, I'll walk you out, Peter. doesn't seem nearly as depressed as you described. Uh, I really think that... I uh, can't thank you enough for what you've done. And, uh, perhaps that, uh, the new, uh, research grant that I arranged would help you in your work. You're a fine scientist, Peter. A good man and a good friend. Thank you. I hope you're not going to let that depress you, darling, or upset you. I don't know, Adam, I was sort of thinking about, um, well, maybe a psychiatrist is a oh, good nonsense. idea. Nonsense. Absolute nonsense. 
Postpartum depression is a temporary thing. It's certainly going to go away before you need any mumbo-jumbo from a quack like Dr. Gould. I, I personally think that your idea about a nanny, it makes much more sense. Chandler residence. This is Brooke English's secretary. I'd like to speak with Adam Chandler, please. Yes, this is he. He wanted me to tell you when Ms. English arrived. She's in the office now and in a meeting. Thank you very much. I'll be there immediately. Goodbye. Uh, Darling, I'm afraid I have to go back to the office. Uh, I hate to leave you. It's okay. I mean, I'm... Good, good. I'll be back as soon as I can. In the meantime, I want you to put all thoughts of psychiatrists out of that pretty little mind of yours. God never made a more sensible woman than you. You're sweet, but Adam, I I'm think... Wondering. Sometimes I wonder if psychiatrists know what they're doing in the first place. Look what happened to Skye. Months she spent in therapy with Gould at O'Kagan. Didn't do her much good, did it? I'll be back soon. But my father and Dixie are man and wife, and I think that this is their problem you should butt out. Can't. What is the attraction? You knock heads with my father, you, you're beaten up and hospitalized for her, you risk being thrown in jail to save her baby. What is her fatal charm, Tad? I can't resist the challenge. Oh. Oh, she, she's got no money. She, she's... She's uneducated. Her social skills consist of making baking biscuits and listening to country music and cooing over the newest addition to the Chandler family. We're getting a little jealous, aren't we? Jealous? I am not jealous of Dixie. Dixie is a throwback to the women's movement and everything it's trying to accomplish for the past year. So move in and help set her free. No. No, I can't do that. I'm up to here trying to get my own liberation. Just think about it. No. No, I have all my own plans for my life. Don't be so selfish. <laughs> Sorry, Tad. It runs in the family. Now I've got to go. Come on, honey. Listen, listen. I wouldn't ask you, after everything you've been through, unless I was desperate. I'm begging you, please. Dixie will be fine. She's got you. That's... That's more than most women dare to dream about. What's that, some kind of backhanded compliment? Yes. But it's also a warning. Get over this obsession with my father's wife. You can't win. She loves him. She loves him for better, or more likely for worse. Goodbye, Ted. Bye, honey. Nico! Give me the damn phone! I'm sorry. I wish the baby was awake. I would have loved for you to meet him. It's not necessary. Oh, yeah, I guess he would be coming in the way, wouldn't he? Um, please, sit down, please. Tell me, Mrs. Chandler, does the child nap regularly at this time? Um, no, no. Sometimes he goes down after lunch, but um, it really varies from day to day. Well, I can have him on a strict schedule before you know it. Oh, these are some of my references. Keep them to read at your leisure. Thank you very much. Uh, the agency really didn't tell me that much. Um, excuse me, Donald is out, so I'm gonna have to get up myself. Excuse me. Ted. Good afternoon, madam. Is your husband at home? No, no. Excellent. Adam's That's Mambo. Mm. Ted. What's with the librarian? I am interviewing a baby nanny. She looks full grown to me. Why? You hate the idea of a nanny. Well, maybe I don't anymore. Okay, can you visit some other time? No, 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 honey. You need me right now. Because believe it or not, private investigators are excellent judges of character. No. No, 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 no. Listen, listen, listen. I've got a built-in lie detector, and I've got the baby's best interest at heart. Please. All right. Okay. Just for a little while, okay? It's only because she scares me. Lead on. This is Tarquin. Hi, I would like you to meet a friend of mine. This is um, Ted Martin. Ted Martin, this is Mrs. Tarquin. Delighted. How do you do? Yeesh. Do you mind if I join in? Um, I hope you don't mind. Ted, I think, probably cares about the baby just as much as I do. I, I hope you don't mind. Okay, great. Well, um, there were some more questions I had for you. Feedings. I wanted to ask you about feedings. Sometimes the baby wakes up in the middle of the night, you know, crying for his bottle. A few nights of just letting him cry will break him of that. <laughs> well, uh, excuse me. Uh, did you use the words break him? Break? Yes. 
Demand feeding is not desirable, Mr. Martin. A baby needs to adjust to the adult schedule, not the other way around. Oh, well, you kind of might have a hard time with my husband, see, because one peep out of that baby and he's up there picking him up and rocking him. That is naughty of Daddy. But I can break him of these bad habits. How about potty training? The baby, not Daddy. Ted. Sorry. The sooner the better. Start early and firmly. One of the problems with our society is children who have no self-discipline. And I suppose thumb-sucking is right out. Absolutely. You're a real Mary Poppins, aren't you? I beg your pardon? Ted, um, Mrs. Tarquin, I, I want to thank you so much for coming by. And I've got your references. I will give them a good read-over, okay? Thank you. Very well. Uh, the door. I'll show you the door. Thank you. Bye-bye. How interesting. A Nazi with a bra. Thank you so much, Mr. Martin. I needed her. You do not need her. She's a walking nightmare. Her underwear clanks when she walks. She probably buys her lingerie from a spot welder. Well, I cannot raise this baby by myself. Yes, not you right can. now. You're a wonderful mother. You're a loving mother. You're... You're everything a baby needs. I, believe me, my mother knows, and she, and she told me so. Besides, the whole nanny thing, that was Adam's idea, right? Okay, so you're a little depressed, you're, you're a little nervous, you forgot a few things. It's no big deal. Yes, it is a big deal, okay? Because I am sick. I cannot trust myself. You are not sick, and you can trust yourself absolutely. And I can prove it. Yeah. I, I've got a surefire test to prove that you, you're playing with a full deck and your elevator goes all the way to the top. And if you pass, you have to agree to forget about all this unstable stuff, okay? Will you do it? I don't try anything. You will please to notice that on this tray there are ten varied and distinctive items. Yeah, oops, there goes one. <laughs> we have the button, we have the snapshot, the pacifier, the paper clip, the postcard, the hairbrite, the spoon, the keys, the pen, and my favorite, the screw, okay? Now, I want you to study this very carefully and commit this to memory, okay? You got it? Mm. Yeah, okay, cool. that, that's enough. Close your eyes. Ted. Close your eyes now. Please. Okay, now. What are you doing? Never mind. Please to open your baby blues. Now, I want you to tell me how many objects are missing from this tray. One, three, it's three. three. Yeah, this is a case of smartness here, you see? We're doing very well on the math portion of our test. Now, please to tell me which items are missing. Which items are missing? Um... You have ten the, seconds. This, uh, the pen's gone. Starting now. And, um... Dun, dun, the, bu dun, the button. Dun, dun, dun. She's doing very well, folks. Dun, dun, The screw! Dun, this is the yes, screw! Yes, the screw! Not my favorite! It's uh. missing! Yeah! Mm -hmm. You see, you passed this part of the test. You're doing, you're doing very, very well. You have excellent recall, and you have amazing visual perception. Okay, now, you can keep the canned poodle meat that you've already won, or you can go for door number two by telling me... What is the third verse of the national anthem, otherwise known as... The Star Spangled Banner. The third verse? Yeah. Okay, it's big at ball games. Da, 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 I'm confused. Da, 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 and where's that on, band who so vauntingly swore amid the havoc of war and the battle of confusion? Is that it? That's amazing. See, that's amazing, because to me it was a trick question. I didn't know there was a third verse of the Star Spangled Banner. So you're probably right, because there's nobody else in the country that could contest you on it. So, uh, what's, what's my phone number? Phone number, um... Quick, yeah, don't think about it that hard. Come on. 555 five, Very, very good. What did you have for breakfast yesterday? Yesterday I had breakfast, um... <laughs> I had uh, cold Chinese food and chocolate milk. <laughs> That's disgusting. <laughs> really? Yeah. I may throw up. Does the whole house eat like that? No, no, just me. I had to sneak away. Mrs. Schindler wasn't looking. I'll bet. <laughs> How cute. Well, you passed the test. I did? Yes, yes, yes. Mrs. Chandler, congratulations. You are 100% okay. You're peachy keen. Mm. Your memory is completely fine. Absolutely in place. You're playing with everything. All the cookies are there, you know? You believe that? Yeah, completely. Listen, listen, listen. I mean, if you're a little depressed and, and, and upset, maybe it's because you don't have enough fun in your life. Oh. But you're all together up here. Well, that's great. That's great. You know what that means? That means I don't have to get a nanny. Well, I hope Adam will like that. Go for it, Mom. Chandler is a prince among men. You better watch. No, no, no. no I'm what about Cecily? No. Uh, no, Cecily. What about Cecily? How could you do that to somebody as nice as her, huh? Well, from what I hear, you've done a lot worse than marrying somebody just for money. 
What is that supposed to mean? Didn't you sleep with somebody's mother and her daughter? No, 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 wait. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What? Wait a minute. I told you that in strictest confidence, okay? That has nothing to do with the situation. And you were also paid to go out with somebody's daughter. That's no, 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 no. Now you're being deluded. You're being really deluded here, okay? That has nothing to do with marriages. There were, there were, uh, uh, Extenuating circumstances. Well, those extenuating circumstances apply here, too. So back off before you I get hurt. I can't back off. I was your best man. You realize that spiritually that makes me an accessory to fraud? Well, you better shut up before you wind up in prison with me, cupcakes. Whoa, wait a minute. I'm not wearing I don't want to talk to you or anybody I'll else. Don't walk away from me. Come here. Shut up. I want to use the phone anyway. Give me the... ...to be the way they used to be. Is that so hard to understand?